it's an awful mess in the back. Hold on, I'll push this keg out. Push that keg out of the way. I do need to sort something out seriously because that's tip. I've been trying to do it today. And actually because I've had a bit of a disaster recently with the, the keyser. Um, the stout, which I'm going to do now, we're going to review now. I'm going to drink it out of a bottle because the I was in here doing a beer review the other night and I must have knocked the top. It was the one on the end there. Because then when I came back out later on to get a beer, it was like bloody stout all over the floor. And it was like I had to... I basically had to, it kicked the keg and I had to clean it up that night and then if that wasn't enough last night I think it was last night or the night before um, the Pilsner, Frank's Pilsner I have on Stout or on top um, it seems to, there seems to be, I was cleaning out the beer lines last weekend I think it was and I didn't connect the two little bits properly um, or well enough and basically it was like a river of bloody Pilsner all the way down and I really hope that oh, that keg hasn't kicked either. Hear some scratching noises coming from over there. Let's get on with this, shall we? Okay. Fortunately, I uh, bottled a few off. I've been handing these out to um, family and friends basically. Um, everyone seems to be pretty positive about the beer, so this the better. Uh, anything I've done recently, really. So anytime IPA seems very popular as well. Or sorry, the all together IPA. That is the stout in a Guinness glass as well too. So, as uh, this was in a bottle, but I bottled this off a keg a few weeks ago. And this is the very last bottle, so. Happy Umbrew Wednesday from a tent. As you can see, I'm in the kids' tent. I put a tent up for the kids in the back garden. Of course, they're not in there inside watching um, YouTube and the like. I mean, see these losers that watch YouTube, there's no hope for them. Um, no, uh, it's just a bit bright out there. And yeah, the garage is in a bit of a state, so I thought I'd come out here and do this. This is weird, isn't it? Me lying here like fucking Lord Muck. Eating grapes. Yeah. We're doing a, I'm doing a, a Guinness clone today. I need a stout on. I don't have any dark beer. Well, I have one little dark beer, but it's not going to last too long. So I need more dark beer on. Um, I've been watching Clive, Clive uh, Cutter's Choice, and he's been doing his Guinness clone. So I thought mm, I might actually try that. So I've got a Guinness recipe from Brewfather, and I have. Um, decided to do it today in my old system, which is the brew in a bag. So I've gone brew in a bag mainly because I can't be bothered cleaning up the Robo brew. It's a bit of a pain in the arse having to clean that thing and take it all apart. So, and the other thing is then that I fancy just doing something different just because I seem to be going through the motions with the Robo brew now because I use it so many times and I fancy just doing something different to try and keep me. From getting bored. So there it is there, four percent this turned out. It's just jet black. Jet black. The head has completely disappeared though, which is a bit disappointing. Now on keg that doesn't seem to happen. So um yeah I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but yeah, it's not good. First out. On the nose, getting you're getting a little bit of roast, roast kind of roasted notes. Oh, it's that kind of. I think it must be the like the flecked barley, the smell of that. Is that what it is? Because it's quite a really nice. A little bit of the hops, so it's EKG all the way through on this. A little bit, but it's more kind of malty than anything. There is no head on that whatsoever. Maybe it's too cold. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, sure. Right, cheers. I'm going in. 
So there's the robo breather. I'm going to use that as an HLT today. And we're going to be mashing in the old school boiler. So I have hooked it up to the ink bird down there. I'm going to do a step mash as per, as per what Guinness do. And we're going to be doing brewing a bag in there. Old school. I want to see what happens. So yeah, we're attempting a step mash then. Gonna be controlling this on brew further. Rather than the robo brew, obviously, which would do it all itself. Just kind of the reason for it. You know, it has its own control panel where you can do step mashes and then the one time I do it, I'm not use it. But sure, just fancy doing something different. I do like the clean up either. So according to the recipe then it's it's fifty seven degrees for seventy five minutes. And then it's up to sixty seven degrees for forty five minutes. And then there's a mash out. So that's what we're going to do. Might also give it a bit of a stir every now and again. And see what we can get efficiency wise. Now efficiency wise, and I think it's something 70%. Somewhere between 67 and 70% I think for this, if I can remember, it's been a while. So yeah, if we can squeeze any extra points out of it to get it up to 70% then, that's what we're going to have to do. That means stirring it every 15-20 minutes and so be it. I'll get that anything else to do. Carbonation is kind of low. Lowish. It's not completely dead at all. <clears throat> the mouthfeel is definitely a kind of a bulky medium, I would say. Which is or maybe a bulky light, a bulky light to medium. You know, fuck it. I'm gonna say medium. I'm gonna say medium. I'm very undecisive tonight. Yeah, which is good because that's only four percent up here. It just shows you what a difference all that kind of flake barley mix. It was like a kilo or something went into, wasn't it? Or you know. flavour is really good. The flavour is really kind of, it's more, it's not so much chocolatey, there's more roast, but it's a kind of like a gentle roast. It's not really kind of, you know, sometimes I've made stouts into being really kind of aggressively astringent, acrid, you know, that type of thing. Um, but this is really on the next level. Now to be fair, this is beers now, I don't know, six weeks, something like that. So I really have left it right to the end to, to actually do this review. I tend to have a dark beer on all the time, but I'll not be drinking it all the time. So, you know, with stouts, it gets better with age, if anything. And that's why I like having it at least one tap with that. And, you know, you're not going to lose hot flavour or anything, anything nonsense like that. That we get white PAs or anything, so. But yeah, that is a really nice beer with no head. It's flat Coca Cola. Um, it's just a shame about the head because it is really a very nice beer. It doesn't taste like Guinness. It does not taste like Guinness. Okay, just a quick little wrap up. 
at the end of the brew day. I wasn't going to do this and I thought, yeah, I may as well. I was going to do it from the 10th as well too, and then I thought, no, no, not the Queen of Sheba. 1044, that's ended up as by hook or by crook. The rest of it was 1045, I think. Um, it was, the brew day was a bit of a mess, to be honest. I, un, well, I undersparged because I was, I did 13, I was supposed to have 16 litres of sparge water. Did 13. And then thought it was upright, I'll put the other three in now, I'll just get the I'll get it the heater on and let's get it starting to warm and then I completely forgot about it. Then had to like rejig the recipe and just oh but um I think it was something like sixty I think it was about sixty seven percent efficiency, I believe. And I think the mash efficiency was something like seventy five percent. Again I didn't take um I didn't take any readings at the end other than that and kind of it's a bit of guesswork in there so it's probably not right so that's pretty much it going to be on WLP 013 got a yeast cake down here I've been saving for about a week just in the fridge I think I will definitely be brewing that again at some point I need to get an order in I think I've got a little bit of roast barley no flecked barley at all I don't think I've got flecked anything I've only got wheat or something like that so I don't think, well, I suppose you could make a, a stout with wheat, couldn't you? Didn't I get the uh, the wheat stout from Rock on Beer, which was superb. So, uh, hmm, let's maybe just put that into my head now. I might have a look at that. I need a dark beer on anyway. I've got, I'm just waffling, aren't I? I'm just rambling. Um, I've got a brown ale on in the fridge now. I didn't take any video of that, so you're not going to see any brew footage of that. I only apologise. But, you know, sometimes I just can't be bothered. So this, as I was saying, really nice, really smooth. Lovely taste of it. It's a little bit roasty. You get that kind of... There's something... You know, that, that flaked barley is just... It just leaves it this really fantastic um, mouthfeel and taste when you use them all the time. It really works well in dark beers. I'm not sure it would work quite so well in a light beer. I mean, I was talking the other week about putting it on a New England IPA. I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea, but um, in dark beer, certainly, it works really well. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to think of any other. I always struggle to review stouts because it's kind of they're usually either roasty or chocolatey, and it's pretty much it, isn't it? So yeah, I think I'll go because I'm just I'm in the mood to ramble, and I'm you just don't need to hear it. So I'll just say that I'm happy with how that turned out, and I will be brewing it again. So. Cheers. The timer only was doing like 76 minutes for the whole brew. So basically had to go through the whole brew. I didn't fix it, like obviously, you know, why would you? But I basically went through the whole brew. The timer's all going off and then I've, now I've had to go back to do the second step, which is the 67 degree mush. It's just... What's all that about? So, yeah, that's a bit. I need to have a look at that and see um, what exactly what's going on there. But something weird, not as weird as me lying here, like the fucking tent in a tent, in a tent, no less. Wow. Okay. Bye.